Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to have you here with us this evening. Maybe you could just kick off with an introduction to Tigers. Um, and in particular, tell us a bit about your character. Yes, yeah, so Tigers is a film about a young footballer who is signed to one of the biggest clubs in the world, Inter Milan. He arrives there not speaking any Italian and pretty green and sort of wet behind the ears. Uh, discovers that it's a, it's a much more cutthroat world than maybe you'd imagine for people who are essentially engaged in playing a team sport. Um, so the film's about his experiences and how he deals with that and the struggles he has along the way. But also it's a film about, I suppose, about adolescence and growing up and finding your path in a kind of broader sense. And I play a character called Ryan, who is a, a slightly older young footballer who takes Martin under his wing. Yeah, gives him a bit of a guiding hand, if not in how to live his life, at least in how to navigate that particular world. I feel like this isn't something we've seen on screen before, despite how many people around the world love football, follow football, watch it all the time. Um, so what was appealing to you when you first read that script? Um, and why do you think it's important to perhaps show this other side? I think you touched on it there, right? I think the, the novelty of it, I think it is a story that I don't recall really having been told. I think one of the reasons of that is for a long time we haven't really had much discourse in society about mental health. Maybe not in, in, in football and sport, that's something that's starting to change and people are starting to look at the pressures that are on these young players and if that environment is conducive to success and how does it prepare people for life beyond football and, and all, all these conversations I think are starting to happen. But the newness of it was interesting. The, anything that shines a light on something from a different angle, I think is that, that has a freshness to it, is, is, is a story that's probably worth worth telling. You know, the main thing for me was the script was just brilliantly written. I, I sort of read it and I thought, oh, this is a story that's been very, very well told. But then when I started, running the scenes and speaking the words I was like oh there's even more it's it's always nice when you think you think you sort of have a measure of it but you get stuck in and you discover there's more there to be found that's deeply deeply gratifying so that was that was the thing for me I thought oh here's this is a piece of writing that is interested in the characters and their experience. It's interested in a sort of subjective psychological experience, not just of recounting something happened, something else happened, you know, plot, 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 plot. So that was massively appealing. And I mean, you and Eric so much looked the part. What kind of prep had to go into it, I guess, from the physical side, but also, you know, the emotional side, kind of understanding actually what goes on in reality. And, and, and what was it like working alongside him? Oh, Eric's fantastic. He does such a great job in this film. And, and on the prep side, I think he had a hell of a lot more to do than me. Just because, uh, just because I suppose he had Ronnie breathing down his neck for however many years as, uh, in the kind of lead up to getting the film shot. Um, and he was doing all sorts of physical work. He was in the gym, he was training, he was doing all this stuff. Ronnie talked to me about this stuff. I said, I'll be all right, Ronnie. He said, don't turn up with a beer belly. You know, you're meant to be a professional footballer. I said, I'm meant to be a goalkeeper. It's all right. He said, don't turn up with a beer belly. Nowadays, they're all fit. I said, oh, no, don't worry, I'll be fine. But I was doing a play beforehand that was very, very physical. But that had movement in it as well. And I, you know, we had a, I think we ran for about six weeks only in total, probably. But it was, you know, it was six actors, five dancers, and I was doing a lot of the movement section. So that got me in shape. So I felt like I was in an all right place to, to, play, to play a footballer at the end of that. But it was a brilliant process. It was a real joy. Were not tempted to keep the blonde hair? <laughs> Massively. Massively. I just went on to something after that. Also, Ronnie said, don't go taking that blonde hair onto any of your other jobs. <laughs> I want it to surprise people when, it, when, it, when Tigers comes out. But I, I, I was, that was his idea. And I was a bit uncertain at first. I thought, eh, just dye my hair. But I was like, isn't it a bit too flat? I mean, and he was like, no, trust me on this one. And I did it. And I was like, this is... I was watching one of the scenes and I said to my partner, I think that's the best I've ever looked. That was it. it was, at least it was caught on camera. That's, I have that to, to comfort me in the, the long, slow decline. Yeah, it definitely suited you. Um, you know, were you surprised? It goes to some very dark places. And if we're talking, I know it's become like a little bit of a hackneyed phrase, but toxic masculinity, like it's more like being in the military. I don't know if I'd ever, you know, seen that side. And, um, you know, were there any particular scenes you thought were quite tough to film? Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I mean, that was a phrase that was massively in my mind, the whole type toxic masculinity. What is this, this sort of machismo, which is sort of an interpretation, I suppose, of strength and resilience, which the film challenges, I think. To be honest, it was, <laughs> it was strangely, it was quite satisfying to get stuck into that. That's not really, I don't, I don't think I'm a particularly macho 
person. I'm not, you know, I, I, I do play football, but you know, that's that's maybe the only the, the only time I get a bit more aggy, for want of a better term. But no, it's not. That's not really me, and I found it quite satisfying to get stuck into that actually yeah it had its challenges but it was strangely satisfying as well to sort of behave a bit poorly and be a bit you know show this kind of affection that ryan shows to martin that also involves just tapping him on the head every now and then and pushing him around and telling him he's being a wuss if he doesn't do this that or the other it was and, and, and what do you hope people take away from watching it because as we've said you know it's showing a different side it's not necessarily putting people off going into playing football but perhaps putting a bit of pressure on these institutions that then you need to look after especially their young players their mental health and you know not success of that nature doesn't come at all costs yes completely i mean I, I i don't think it's always so direct and quantifiable the effect of art of any kind but what i think it does do film tv theater whatever it is uh, figurative art novels whatever it is they add to a sort of social awareness around an issue and are part of that discussion a part of the conversation Yes, I hope this definitely does that. I hope Tigers adds to that conversation and gets people talking and thinking about it in the realm of football, but also, you know, in people's day to day, whatever, whatever it is they do. I mean, for some people, for me, it makes me think every now, you know, I watch my team play every week and sometimes I'm like, oh, so and so just isn't at it. And it's, it's fascinating how many people engage with football, struggle to humanize the characters. You see that in the way that football players are being abused online, in the terraces we don't really have terraces anymore but you know i mean from the stands so hopefully it goes some way to humanizing these young people who are extraordinary committed athletes who i think often get a really bad rep just because they earn a lot of money but frankly they're the ones playing the game and they're the ones whose talent is being monetized so shouldn't they be the people earning from the proceeds of their excellence and their commitment not just the people selling it. And can you quickly tell us what you might work on next? I'm shooting a film at the minute, which is a period piece, which is quite fun. So lots of nice clothes and a little part in my hair, which is nice. Not every day I do that. And then I'm on to a rom-com straight after that, which will be coming out this Christmas. But yeah, certainly this Christmas, the, the rom-com will be out and it's a, it's a fantastic script. It's really good, so I'm excited for it. Amazing, we well, can't wait to see those as well. Enjoy the evening. Thanks so much for sharing all that with us. Cheers. Thank you.